Hey everybody, it's Dave. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I hope you're having a pretty good Tuesday. I know it can be pretty tough if you're a Rocket Lab shareholder right now, what with us being down in the threes. But uh, today, first of all, before I get into the video, I do just need to thank the newest channel member, Stay Mo, who signed up to support monthly. Very much appreciated. I hope you feel like you're getting your values worth out of the videos I do put out. So uh, with that out of the way, today I would like to talk about Redwire, who reported their Q4 and full year results for 2023 recently. And this company is starting to get a lot more interesting to me, I'm not going to lie. Um, I wouldn't say I would prefer them to Rocket Lab by any means, but on several different metrics, they're starting to look quite cheap. So I wanted to talk a little bit about their Q4 results, their full year 2023 results, what they do, what I'm thinking about for the future, and whether I'm looking at buying the stock. Before we dive into that though, I hope you'll consider hitting that like button and that subscribe button to help out the channel. That's very much appreciated. Also, I do have a Twitter account where I tweet quite regularly and I'm trying to increase the followers on that. So if you're interested in following me on Twitter, the link will be down in the description as well. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's dive into Redwire and their 2023 earnings results. So here we are with Redwire's Q4 results. By the way, if you're not too familiar with the company, I did make another video looking into what it is they do a while back. I'll try to link that one in the description down below as well. But basically, they do all sorts of things in terms of space infrastructure. So they don't build out rockets. Uh, they don't build out very many of their own satellites completely, but they have a large solar division, which competes with Solero, has these pretty fancy rollout solar cells that are actually on the internet. National Space Station. They've been involved in all sorts of science projects on the space station with the bone density growing plants in space, all sorts of different things really, um, which is fine. And obviously they should continue to grow as the space industry grows. But I will say in terms of the overall vision of where the company's going in the future, uh, I'm not as bullish on that as Rocket Lab. I think they should still grow. They should still continue building out their space infrastructure. They just don't have that cool overarching vision of, you know, whether it's with Rocket Lab operating their own constellation and getting that recurring revenue or something like that. So um, this one for me could be more interesting as a trade as opposed to like say a 10 plus year long term investment because by some metrics they're starting to look a little bit undervalued but not one I would say at least right now I'm looking to hold like, you know, forever for instance. Okay, so talking about the Q4 results, their revenues for the full year of 2023 increased 52%, which is absolutely amazing, to $243.8 million, so still a relatively small company. Um, net loss improved dramatically from 100 and by 103.4 million dollars. Their net loss was still negative, but only $27 million for the year. Um, now, this part is what kind of caught my attention on the earnings. This is adjusted EBITDA, not just regular EBITDA. And if you're not familiar with EBITDA, that's earnings before interest, depreciation, amortization. So they back out a lot of those things. But by this metric, it is already profitable for 2023, which is not something Rocket Lab can say. Um, so that is a good sign and takes away a lot of the risk the company's facing, in my opinion, because clearly, you know, if they're adjusted EBITDA positive, they may still be burning some capital, but not a ton. And they're definitely heading in the right direction. So that adjusted EBITDA increased by 26 million uh, to go positive which is, yeah, a very good sign and what made me want to look into this a little bit further. Uh, cash used in operations for the fourth quarter uh, was $15.7 million. Their book to bill ratio, which is basically how many new contracts they've booked versus how much they billed and got paid for in Q4, was almost three to one. So signing a lot more new contracts than they were getting paid and they were already up 51 percent on the year does bode well for the future although that is just one quarter of course not the uh the full year but that's a very good ratio for booking new contracts 
So uh, went through all that. The contract backlog has increased 19.1% year over year to $372 million. Um, yeah, I think these results are pretty good overall. The stock seemed to think so. It's jumped pretty significantly over the past couple days. I think we had a 9% move yesterday and we're looking at a several percent move up today. Uh, unfortunately, I missed out on those days, but I do want to make sure I do my own research and diligence before I consider jumping in and following the herd on this one. Now, another thing that has me kind of excited about Redwire, or at least intrigued might be a better word, is the price to sales ratio. When I looked at this yesterday before that big 9% move, it was actually below one. So sales was the revenue the company's brought in over the past year, and the price is basically the value of the company. So below one would mean that the value of the company is less than the amount of revenue they've brought in over the past year. And now we're slightly above one, but still quite low. Just to give you a point of reference here, if we look at Rocket Labs, price to sales right now it's sitting at an eight which is obviously much higher than a one so from that metric Redwire can start to look very cheap and with adjusted EBITDA being positive now uh, a lot less risk that they'll go out of business now a few interesting slides I've grabbed here from a couple different Redwire presentations I just want to highlight before we start talking valuation. Uh, liquidity, which is important, how much money they have available and whether they can get to profitability. This one was one of the primary reasons why I hadn't invested in Redwire previously. Their balance sheet Num the amount of cash on hand always seemed a little bit low. So right now they're saying liquidity, they have $48.3 million. Um, not a ton. And a lot of that is actually available borrowing capacity. So in Q4, they had $18 million of available borrowing capacity and $30 million of available cash on hand, which is actually quite a bit higher than Q3, where they had just $10 million of cash on hand. That quarter, I was getting quite worried for the company looking at only $10 million in the bank. So I'm not going to lie about that. The other thing that I found interesting, and this is what really bothers me about Redwire, but this bothers me about a lot of space companies, not only Redwire. Going back to their investor day presentation for their SPAC when they're going public, they predicted crazy revenue growth that they never even got close to achieving. So they say here that they're going to deliver 72% compound annual growth rate on their revenue growth from 2021 to 2025. The real number we're looking at is more like 30%, so way off. And this kind of pisses me off a little bit, I'm not going to lie, it makes me wonder whether I can trust management, because either they had no idea what was going on and what was coming for the company, or they were just lying to pump up the value of their SPAC and try to you know, increase the amount of cash they're getting in that deal. So I feel like either way, it's not a good look and it frustrates me to see this, but I don't know if that should stop me from investing in a company that does look cheap today because of that history. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I'm interested to hear your take. Now, here's an example for 2023. They were projecting $424 million. Obviously, they just announced and they were in the mid 200, so not even close. Next year is even more dramatic from the initial SPAC. They were saying they would be making $766 million. The real number they're guiding for next year now is $300 million. So that is just way off and uh, really frustrating if you go back to what they said in their SPAC presentation. Okay, so now onto the spreadsheet. The entire idea behind this potential investment I was thinking is that I find a lot of value tends to get unlocked in investments when companies go from cash burning to cash positive. Uh, a lot of risks gets taken out of the stock and I find these investments can jump massively. So to me, while the overall story and like grand vision behind Redwire doesn't sound as exciting or at least not that I'm aware of, 
if you can grab it and hop aboard right before they go positive on term in terms of making profits, I think you can be very well rewarded on a stock like that. So that's why I found it interesting hearing that they were now EBITDA adjusted EBITDA positive, and I wanted to see when do I think they will be actual net income positive, and perhaps the stock could jump significantly there. Unfortunately, their entire guidance for the year 2024 is just 300 million in revenue. They don't give any guidance on margins or any of those other numbers. It's just the top line revenue number. So I did try to make some projections here um, based on a you know valuation template. Filled in all the values for 2021 to 2023. You can see operating income, they burned about $15 million 2023. Not massive, so you know, hopefully that liquidity they do have is enough to get them through. In terms of net income, again, it was negative 27, but that takes into account other items that may not actually result in kind of cash in the bank being burned. Uh, 2024, I was wondering if they will go net income positive this year, because if so, then I think it's a really good time to buy with a price to sales below one. So I threw in the $300 million revenue figure that they said they're going to get this year. Um, I also just kind of kept the gross margin or cost of goods sold about the same and just kind of scaled it. So that would give you a cost of goods sold of around $228 million. Uh, SGNA just put in a modest increase as well as R&D. By the way, R&D is tiny in this company, so I feel like either they're not investing in the future enough or some of those items are just getting put on the SGNA line or somewhere else. Anyway, bottom line is I'm still seeing a slight negative net income number for 2024 if all my assumptions are correct. They're getting very close but still slightly negative. Then it should be positive in 2025. Of course these are all estimates on my end so I could be off. They haven't guided for being net income positive in this year and I feel like you know if they were confident of that they would because you know, every CEO wants their stock to do well, of course. So, you know, maybe we're looking at more of a 2025 in terms of cash flow positive. Well, I should say net income positive. Looking at a uh, earnings per share, if they did keep the same outstanding share count, which they wouldn't, it would probably go up, but relatively modestly. And you gave them even a price to earnings of something like 20, that would be more like $6 per share. Whereas right now we're trading at like 380, I believe. So that's quite a good investment for maybe a year or two, maybe two years, uh, almost a double in two years and potentially more than that. Cause I do find when these companies go cash flow positive, generally you start to get quite high PE ratios, at least at first. So I think there is upside to that number, but maybe we're a little too soon to hop on this bandwagon, considering again, the the overall overarching vision is not necessarily something I'm super buying into. This is more just a, a play on, I think they're going to break even and their earnings are going to start to look good. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this one going forward. I don't think I'm going to buy quite yet, but you can say, see here, I um, made myself a little note and I do check my spreadsheets occasionally. This might be a buy in 2025 or late 2024 if it remains below $6. And as we get those quarterly results, they do continue to be on track to going cash flow positive. So something I'm going to keep an eye on. Don't think I'm quite ready to buy today because I'm also cash poor these days. <laughs> Don't have a ton of capital to deploy, unfortunately. But could be an interesting one. Seems like there's a lot less risk than there used to be for this company. They did grow substantially their revenues last year. And maybe 2025 is the year that they go net income positive and we could see a big jump in the stock price. So let me know if you're holding Redwire stock, if you were able to get some gains on that big 9% day yesterday. I hope you did. Um, and let me know what you think of this. If I'm way off on some of these numbers, it, when you think they're going to go cash flow positive, positive because really that's what the whole trade is all about to me. So yeah, Redwire starting to look up a little bit, Spire starting to look up a little bit. Some of these space SPACs that have just been relentlessly 
crushed down finally starting to look a little bit brighter i guess they're not all horrible companies although we did have obviously the astras and virgin orbits of the world as well uh it could be an exciting time in the next year or two in the space industry as a lot of these companies look to try and become profitable let me know again if you're invested in redwire i'd love to hear from you and your thesis on the company and why you're invested i'll keep an eye on the comments below for that if you are not already a subscriber i do hope you'll consider doing that every subscriber is so much appreciated and the channel members of course uh is just a whole nother level and uh, definitely help me to keep doing what i'm doing here i hope you guys have a great day a great rest of the week and i will see you in the next video bye for now